Vincent Drucci, also known as The Schemer, born Vincenzo di Ambrogio, January 1, 1898, April 4, 1927, was a Sicilian American mobster during Chicago's Prohibition era who was a member of the Northside Gang, Al Capone's best known rivals. A friend of Dino Banayan, Drucci succeeded him by becoming co leader. He is the only U.S. organized crime boss to have been killed by a policeman. Early years born in Chicago, Illinois, to Sicilian parents, after serving in the U.S. Navy, he returned to Chicago and started committing small-time crimes such as breaking open pay telephone coin boxes. He joined Dino Bonion's Northside Gang, which had taken over the formerly legal breweries and distilleries in that part of the city giving them massive profits from illicit production of alcohol, in addition to shakedowns and other rackets. Often described as mainly Irish-American, after Obanion's death the Northside gang was successively headed by Jaime Weiss, Drucci and Bugs Moran who were respectively of Polish, Italian and French descent, while the most influential members who never became leader were Louis Altieri, of Spanish parentage, Samuel Morton who was from a Jewish background, and the German Albert Kaczelek. Though a leading member of the relatively small gang, Drucci acted as enforcer and was actively involved in numerous violent incidents. On one occasion when ambushed in the street by a gunman with a Capone trademark driving by, he charged at the assailants and tried to give chase in a hijacked car. Lawrence Burgreen, in his book, Capone, The Man in the Era, describes Drucci. He had a streak of recklessness and daring, and he looked the part of a gangster, tough, dark, and menacing, his expression frozen in a tragic mask topped by wild unkempt hair and a face to haunt the dreams of his enemies. The Schemer, he was known by the nickname, The Schemer, in part because of his penchant for inebriated rumination about outlandish plans, in reality he operated by intimidation and activities such as extortion of money from legitimate businesses. One female shop owner who refused to pay was beaten up by a husky woman as Drucci looked on. Twelve Drucci, whose practical jokes including making salacious comments to couples on the street while dressed as a priest, performed in a 1923 pornographic film called Bob's Hot Story. 12D Drucci was believed to have been responsible for a November 30, 1926 incident at a Chicago Northside garage. In what the Chicago Tribune described as a serio comedy, Drucci, along with Northside gang members Bugs Moran, Frank Gusenberg, and Pete Gusenberg, are alleged to have entered the garage where two Chicago police officers were securing 50 cases of seized beer. Claiming to be a federal agent, Drucci ordered the others to handcuff the officers and confiscate their guns, showing no interest in the seized beer, and left with the officers still handcuffed. The incident humiliated the Chicago Police Department, which was already more sympathetic to the Northsiders' rivals, the Capone Organization. Conflict with Southside The Northsiders found themselves undercut on the price of alcohol by rivals, the Jenna crime family, which was allied to the Italian-American Southside gang led by Johnny Torrio, who had pretensions of citywide overlordship. Obanion at first tried to get Torrio to reign in the Genes. When Torrio failed to do so, Obanion started hijacking the Genes shipments. The Genes wanted to kill Obanion, but Sicilian politician Mike Merlo, head of the Chicago chapter of Uni1 Siciliana and an underworld power broker due to his political influence, vetoed the killing. On November 10, 1924, Days after Merlot had died of an illness, Torrio men John Squalisi and Albert Anselmi arrived at Obanion's Chicago flower shop, ostensibly arranging floral tributes for Merlot's funeral, and murdered Obanion. The Northside gang then moved against the Janus and the Southside gang in retaliation. As a result of Obanion's death, the leadership fell to Jaime Weiss, who initiated a string of retaliatory attacks on the Janus and Torrio. On January 25, 1925, Drucci, Weiss, and Moran ambushed Torrio's bodyguard lieutenant, Al Capone, shooting up his car, but failing to kill him. His bodyguard was then kidnapped, tortured and murdered. 
On January 27, Drucci and the two other Northsiders ambushed Torrio while he was shopping with his wife. While severely wounded, Torrio survived the attack. At one point, police brought Drucci and Weiss to Torrio's hospital bedside, but Torrio refused to identify them as the shooters. After his recovery and a short jail term, Torrio relinquished control of the Southside gang to Capone and returned to Italy. On May 25, Drucci, Weiss, and Moran killed Southside ally Angelo Genera. On July 8, Drucci and his second gunman murdered Tony Genera. On November 13, they murdered Genu gunman Samuzzo Amatiuna in a barber shop. The owner of his favorite restaurant was also kidnapped and murdered, and Capone began referring to Drucci as the bedbug. Gang warfare on August 10, 1926. Drucci and Weiss were ambushed by Capone gunmen on a Chicago street and shot their way out. Five days later, Drucci and Weiss exchanged shots with Capone's men in a rerun assassination attempt at the same location. The Northside gang responded with an even more high-profile assassination attempt, using a ploy to lure Capone to the front of the Cicero, Illinois hotel that he lived in, and then firing hundreds of rounds through the windows. Capone was shaken but unhurt. On October 11, Capone's men killed Weiss outside the Holy Name Cathedral as he walked from his car to the gang's headquarters. Drucci and Moran now assumed leadership of the Northside gang. After Weiss shooting, Drucci and Moran attended a peace conference with all the Chicago gangs, including the Southsiders. Although Moran wanted to keep fighting, Drucci persuaded him to accept a ceasefire. In 1927 William Hale Thompson at the head of his powerful Cook County machine that included strong support among African American districts, attempted to return as mayor. Thompson's campaign statements were interpreted as an indication that if he won the city would have a relaxed attitude to law enforcement, and he was seen as Capone's man. There were complex interactions between the political and ethnic aspects of the rivalries. Irish-American politicians attempted to paint Thompson as an anti-Catholic Anglo-Saxon chauvinist, despite his Capone influence Italian First Ward support. However, Thompson's perceived beholdenness to African-American voters also led to shifting of allegiance among voters, which partially nullified his political machine. Capone resorted to an escalation of violence to ensure the political contest would be decided in Thompson's favor. A citywide gang war erupted at the prospect of Capone getting a mayor inimical to all his rivals. On April 3, 1927, Drucci decided to take the offensive by ransacking the office of Deaver supporting Alderman Dorsey Crow. The Chicago Police Department chief then ordered his men to arrest all Northside gang members on site. Death on April 4, 1927, Chicago police arrested Drucci, finding a concealed .45 pistol. One of the arresting officers was Detective Dan Healy, who had shot an armed robber dead a few months previously. Exploits such as a near-fatal beating of Capone rival, Joseph Santis, during the November 1926 saloon raid, had gained Healy a reputation for apoplectic violence against criminals though not always in the line of duty. Drucci objected to being held by the arm while waiting for the car that would take him and two associates arrested at the same time to the courthouse, where Drucci's lawyer was waiting to post bail. He insulted Healy, who responded with a slap, then drew and brandished his gun and threatened to shoot Drucci. In the car, the argument continued, but what happened next was a matter of dispute. Later, the policeman who had been present during the incident supported Healy's version of events, that Drucci, while announcing his intention, had lunch for Healy's gun, but Healy had drawn back then shot Drucci. Drucci's two associates gave a very different account, asserting that a scuffle started after Healy punched Drucci, causing the driver to halt the car at the roadside, whereupon Healy had got out on the running board before drawing and firing at Drucci, who was shot while sitting in the car, handcuffed, with his hands in his lap. Hit in the arm, leg, and abdomen, Drucci collapsed dying on the floor of the car. Aftermath he received a lavish funeral at Mount Carmel Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois, 
That was typical gangland fashion at the time. Druxus silver casket cost $10,000 and more than $30,000 in flowers adorned the funeral rooms. Healy and the other policemen's version of the death was accepted by the authorities. Druxus estate amounted to $500. 000. Capone continued to back Thompson, and on the polling day of April 10, 1928, in the so-called Pineapple Primary, voting booths in the wards known to oppose Thompson were targeted by Capone's bomber, James Belcastro, causing the deaths of 15 people. Belcastro also was accused of the murder of an African-American candidate in the election who'd been chased by cars of gunmen through the streets on polling day before being shot dead. Four police officers were accused along with Belcastro. An indication of the attitude of local law enforcement to Capone's organization came in 1931 when Belcastro was shot in an attempt on his life. Police suggested to skeptical journalists that Belcastro was an independent operator. The Northside Gang was finished as a force in the underworld by the 1929 St. Valentine's Day Massacre. However, the massacre led to public disquiet about Thompson's alliance with Capone, a factor in Anton J. Cermak winning the mayoral election on April 6, 1931. A remnant of the North Side persisted alongside the similarly weak Roger Tauhi, but got eliminated during Capone's pushback against the allies of Cermag. References External links Vincent Drucci at Find a Grave